Hello Summoners, and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Trey, and in today's video, we'll be talking about 10 tricks that pros abuse that you should too. All of these tricks are more about know-how than crazy mechanics, so you don't need to spend hours getting them down. You can pretty much apply them immediately. If you like what you see in this video, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. You can see what we have to offer for free, and if you're serious about leveling up your game, you can become a pro member for just $7.99 a month. We already offer a ton of perks that we'll talk about towards the end of the video, but to sweeten the deal, we decided that we'll be doing RP giveaways for subs as well. Every patch, we're offering up a pretty hefty 11,525 RP. Entering takes just three quick steps. Click the link in the description, sign up for a pro membership, and comment your username down in the comments section below. All right, let's get on with these tricks. The first one is the Cheater Recall. This is a zero risk, medium reward way to give yourself an advantage in lane. This is probably one of the more well-known tricks, but in case you're not familiar with what a Cheater Recall is, here's the spark notes. Usually, when you want to go for a reset, the default thing to do is hard shove the wave so you can just get back to base instantly, but when going for a Cheater, you want to slow push the minions, stacking up the first two waves. Then, once the third arrives, you start clearing as fast as you can. Now, the massive wave of minions you've stacked up will crash into the enemy turret, and you go back to your base. You'll be able to buy an item and get back without missing much, if any, CS. But what makes it even more OP is that your opponent can't reciprocate because now the wave will be bouncing back towards you. If they leave, you can easily build up a freeze and turn it into a snowballing CS lead that they can't do anything about. So basically, they're forced into staying in lane with you and you get to have an item advantage over them for free. That's a really big deal. Even a single longsword or amplifying tome can make a huge difference when you're talking about the first few levels of the game since base stats are so low at this point that a single item component is really significant. As for when you should go for a Cheater Recall, technically, this method of crashing a wave can be done at any time, but the true Cheater Recall is done right away with the first three waves of minions in the game. Getting a free recall off to get a good lane phase isn't the only way you should be abusing slow pushing. In the mid to late game, so many people just drop the concept of wave management altogether. They either freeze forever trying to farm, or just hard shove waves to quickly rotate elsewhere. Not integrating slow pushing is crazy. If done right, a slow push in the mid to late game can be a massive source of extra pressure. There's a reason the pros call it the sixth man strat. There are two ways to use this. The first is to generate this massively stacked up wave, then rotate to a Feist elsewhere, leaving it to split on its own. In doing this, you're forcing the enemy team to make a decision. They can take the 5v5 fight over whatever objective you're going for, and let that massive wave die and slash or do a ton of damage to their tower, or they'll have someone catch it, so you win the objective fight for free. The other thing you can do is just push with the wave. Most of the time, someone will come to answer you eventually, but if they don't, Having all these minions means you'll easily be able to shred through a turret, sometimes getting more than just one with a single push. The key to using this well is just effectively reading the map. The best time to start up the slow push is about two minutes before a big objective fight is going to happen. So you can set it up, then decide whether you're going to leave it on its own or push with it based on how things are going. The next tip takes much less thought process and is something that has trickled down from high elo to the rest of solo queue in the last few years. At level 1, you can throw down your Trinket Ward, usually around 50 seconds, then recall and get Oracle's Lens. Since Oracle's Lens recharges so quickly, it'll always be back up by the time you're looking to gank, so this is a super efficient trick. There are a couple of useful spots you can place the ward to get info. The most popular is the Pixel Bush on the opposite side of the map that you start on. This is most commonly done when the enemy jungler is a strong early champ that can invade you in your second quadrant. It also doubles as a way to prevent cheesy mid lane ganks at level 2 from that side of the lane. If you don't care about being invaded and just want more info on where the opposing jungler starts, you can also throw the ward down on one of their buffs. This is just a bit riskier since it involves crossing into their jungle to actually put the ward down. This ward strat is typically done by junglers, but support players can also do the same thing. Having Sweeper for lane can actually be really nice anyways, especially if you're playing a champ with good lane pressure, since you can deny enemy bush vision entirely. The next tip involves a different type of vision play. This is almost always going to be more applicable by side laners. When you know the next minion or two will be enough XP to get level 6, you can slip into a bush, then hit your foes with a surprise ult from within for an engage that no one can react to. Obviously, this isn't useful on every champ, but those that can should definitely use it more often. It's a bit easier to coordinate this trick when duoing, since you'll probably be in comms, 
But even if not, just communicate that you plan on doing this to your bot lane partner ahead of time. Also, a very specific use of this can be done with Shaco. If Shaco was last seen as level 5, then hits 6 out of vision and sends his clone out of the bush, the enemy bot laners will see him as level 5 still. And engage support can easily be baited into jumping on the clone immediately, giving you a free chunk out on them, if not straight up getting you a kill. This is really niche, but when you pull it off, it's super satisfying and can definitely tilt your foes. The next little trick that you see pros doing all the time is warding over walls. This prevents one of the silliest mistakes I see people making all the time. Look, if you suspect you're being ganked by the enemy jungler, the last thing you should be doing is walking straight at the river to drop a ward. If they're already there, you're either blowing flash to escape them, or you're just dead for this stupid mistake. Instead, Learn all the different places that you can get wards to place over walls. There's plenty of videos out there for just this topic. Now, the next one is a big one. Whether you call it ore walking, auto spacing, or some other made up jargon, being able to integrate movement between your attacks is a crucial skill that not enough people use. And no, it's not just ADCs that should be utilizing it. It doesn't matter if you're ranged or melee, carry or tank. Every champ can use it to help better kite or chase opponents, depending on the situation. I know I said at the start that the tricks in this video wouldn't take tons of practice to learn, and you may be thinking that this is one of the most mechanical things in the game, but hang on a second. Yes, to pull off a perfectly smooth Space Glider 4000, you do need insane mechanics acquired through lots of practice. But even very basic level orb walking is something you can integrate in your games, and it will make a massive difference. Next up, we have another bush trick for you. You know those times where you have a big range advantage, so you want to constantly harass your lane opponent? But every time you hit them, the minions pummel you, and you take just as much, and sometimes even more damage than you're dealing to them? Well, the solution is to just adjust your positioning and look to trade near the brush. Every time you get off your poke, run into the bush to get out of vision, and the minions will forget you were ever there. The next trick is learning how to properly buffer spells. There are actually four parts to this. The first is learning to buffer spells while using flash. Everyone knows the classic ones at this point, like RE Charm and Lee Sin's Kick, but there are a lot more that people don't use nearly as often. Orianna can flash with the ball on her to move where the ult hits at the last second. Alistar can Q flash for a knockup that foes can't ever react to. Xin Zhao can even do an insect of his own with an R flash. There are way too many to list them all, so the best thing to do if you're wondering if your champ can buffer one of their spells is to quickly hop into practice tool and test it out. The second buffer trick is using abilities to negate CC. This is pretty champ specific. Only a couple champs like Ezreal with his blink and Tristana with her jump can do it. This is because they have an uninterruptible cast. If they're CC during the cast, the mobility goes off after anyways. You use these to keep yourself safe usually, but you can also use it to block CC for allies in a pinch. For the champs that can't use a mobility spell to escape being CC'd, you can still use damage spells as a buffer to trade back while the CC is on you. For example, let's say you're playing Senna. Senna's ult is a powerful 2v2 spell, but with its long cast time, it's pretty easy to dodge. On top of that, that's also a good chunk of time where you aren't autoing or using your other spells. But if the enemy bot lane forces an engage on you, neither one of those issues really matter. Those that are going in aren't really in a position to dodge. Plus, since you're likely going to be CC'd, it's not really like you have time to be autoing or using other spells anyways. The last form of buffering we'll talk about is using a targeted ability before you flash. The best example of this is Malzahar, so that's who we'll talk about here. But you can apply this to so many other picks. Let's say your jungler is coming in for a gank, so you go to flash R your opponent. If they have really fast reflexes, they may be able to react to your flash before you can get that R on them. If you instead try casting R on them when you're out of range, Malz will start auto moving towards them. Then, once you're in flash alt range and you use the summoner, he'll instantly tether them with the alt, something that no one can avoid. Something I feel like people used to do way more often was actively using the enemy turret to deny CS. What I mean by that is that when you're about to take the first turret in your lane, let it thin out the wave first. Every minion it gets is one that your opponent won't be getting. If the wave is 15 minions deep, letting the turret kill them all right before you knock it over is basically equal to denying them a kill. On top of the face value amount of gold you deny them, you also have to consider the wave state after you break the turret. If you were 100% going to be able to shove that minion wave all the way to the inner turret, the wave would definitely bounce back to you. But usually when you're killing the first turret in the lane, it's early on, and your foes are going to be back pretty soon. If you leave a stacked up wave not crashed into their inner turret, they could turn that into a freeze, making it impossible for you, or whichever of your teammates ends up coming to this lane, to farm. 
The last thing that pros do that the vast majority of solo queue players don't is playing around people that are already doing well, not the people that are losing. Contrary to popular belief, it's not the jungler's or anyone else's job to bail people out when they die three times in their lane. Doesn't matter if they ended up that way from losing 1v1s or dying to five jungle ganks in a row. By going to the lane where someone is already so far behind, you're just risking the game for nothing. What happens if their opponent is strong enough to 2v1? What if the enemy jungler shows up? Instead of worrying about that, just play to get other lanes ahead. Then later, you can work towards shutting down the problem opponent. Obviously, this point should be taken with a grain of salt. If you can stop the bleeding fast and save the situation, go for it. It's just about recognizing when a lost cause is a lost cause and knowing you really need to focus yourself elsewhere so you can drag that teammate across the finish line, kicking and screaming if you have to. And that about wraps up things for our 10 tricks that pros abuse that you need to too. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to see more from us, head on over to ProGuides.com. We have tons of other content and courses by pros like Core JJ, Double Lift, and General Sniper for you to access. And now we're even working on pushing out guides for every champ. All of that for just $7.99. And that's not all. If you prefer a more one-on-one -on -one approach, our team of coaches are the best you'll find anywhere on the market. And with the Pro Guide sub, you'll even get a discounted rate. Trust me, the amount of time you save by booking a session with them is so, so worth it. You'll accelerate your climb by months once you apply everything they have to teach you. Again, the link for the site is down in the description box below. Anyways, thanks so much for watching the video. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next one, but until then, good luck out there on the Rift. Bye-bye.